Riven is OP. Okay, Whew. we got that out of the way. Uh, all the cards are on the table, the cat's out of the bag. Let's go get McDonald's. It's no secret that Riven is a hot topic of debate at the moment. I mean, literally, it's no secret at all. Everyone knows this champ is too strong right now. It's all over Reddit, YouTube, Twitter, MySpace. How could Riot refuse to nerf her like this? Riot has stated several times over now that Riven suffers from some regional bias, meaning that Western regions tend to ban her, pick her, and win more with her. Basically, they're not nodding that Riven is OP, you are all just bad. Jokes aside, of course there are some reasons for Riven being a very popular champion overall, but statistically it's true that she is banned and played a bit more in Western countries than in Eastern countries. For NA in gold, Riven has around a 52% win rate, an 11% pick rate, and a 20% ban rate. For EU West in gold, Riven has a slightly higher win rate at around 52.3%, same pick rate, and a bit lower ban rate. In Korean gold, Riven has the highest win rate of the bunch around 53%, but has a little bit of a lower pick rate and a much lower ban rate. Also, I do agree with Riot's philosophy that yes, it's very hard to accurately give context to high elo data. When looking at data for Grandmaster or higher, there are so few games played in that MMR bracket that you will have a tough time analyzing the variance. However, Riven does not have a bad win rate in lower brackets, and in Platinum Plus, she sits at the single highest win rate for top lane. Today, let's investigate why she is essentially resistant to nerfs right now, and let's talk about some balance ideas. Right away, you'll notice that Riot has been buffing certain champions who do well into Riven. Things like Urgot are no slouch either, and tanks such as Trundle who completely dumpsters Riven also receive some buffs. Remember that when it comes to balancing, you do not always have to nerf. Sometimes you can also buff counters or buff weaker champions. Of course, you do have to be careful with this, because there is such a thing called power creep. If you do nothing but buff champions who are weak to bring them to the level of overpowered champions, you did fix your problem, but now in some ways, everything can be too strong. Over time, this can become dangerous, and there are plenty of multiplayer games that have had issues with power creep. One of my favorite games all time is Modern Warfare 2, and in that game, it's not that the ACR or the UMP45 were overpowered, it's that everything was overpowered. This made the game both incredibly fun and frustrating at the same time. Games in which you did really well, you were unstoppable and were king for the day, and games that went bad, you wanted to pull your hair out. If Riot chooses to buff Trundle, Quinn, Poppy, and Singed, who I would argue when they are good are massive counters to Riven, you run the risk of these champions doing the exact same thing that Riven is doing right now, going hog wild in every single game. The other thing is that Riven is not alone in the category of overpowered. Your main argument could be that recently, Kale and Zed have been very strong and clearly overtuned, and Riot did actually nerf them. I would say that this is a fair argument, but remember that in some ways this was on Riot's own accord. They directly buffed Zed, and saw immediate impact on the very patch that he was buffed. This is what you call controllable balance. Kale was also reworked and is a completely new champion, which is why things need to be under control because both of these are direct changes to the champions. Riven is not exactly like this, and it may be hard to exactly break down what is making her good. Riven has not received any direct changes in quite a while, but indirect ones for sure. A commonly cited problem for Riven right now is the introduction of two things. Number one, the new Conqueror rune, and number two, Spear of Sojin. When these two things were put into the game, Riven did see a spike in her win rate. And now, players who play Riven may point to these as the culprit. However, Riven is a very versatile champion. Turns out, it may not just be Death Dance, or Spear of Sojin, or Conqueror, because right now Adrian has been running a crit Riven build. This is hilarious, and honestly something that I find funny, and if you want me to try this out in a video, let me know, I'm down to play some Crit Riven. Right now, Crit items are in a really good spot. I've even been playing and have seen some double or even triple Infinity Edge Jin with Stormraiser. So what Adrian is building is not completely unique to Riven, in fact in the past I used to play some Crit Riven because she does synergize well with Crit because of her passive. Regardless, of course it's not just crit that can work. Riven one tricks can usually make anything work. Lethality, tanky, off tank, full damage, crit, lifesteal. There's nothing wrong with Black Cleaver and Unsealed Spellbook Riven. If you really wanted to and you were good at Riven, that build is perfectly fine and works. It may not just be as overpowered. My contention would be that there are other factors that make Riven good. Number one, she is really tanky. The damage reduction on Death Dance is very high, and although this may contradict my previous statement, you gotta hear me out. 
The idea is that right now, more players can play and win, most importantly, win on Riven. I am not saying that bad Riven players 1v9 or carry the game, but I have seen enough games and seen enough Rivens who are still useful, despite them not being very good at the champion. Riven has AoE crowd control, and with the Death Dance and Spear of Sojin build, you are actually quite tanky. Another thing that I think is not being talked about enough is Legend Tenacity. This rune is super overtuned, and makes all bruisers better. The fact that you get 30% tenacity for free, and by the way, it stacks very quickly, it's not even close to how slow eyeball collection is, is very broken on Riven. This is quite literally unfair because you get to build Ninja Tabby or CDR boots every game while also getting free Merc Treads. This removes counterplay from her kit because in theory if Riven is being perma CC'd, she cannot use her shield. Her current tankiness and survivability can explain why a champion who is as hard to play as Riven can be successful in lower elos by lower skilled players. It may even show you that his Shinshin, the Riven expert himself, has the ability to play 4 games of Riven and he won 3 of them. A Shinshin 75% win rate Riven by the way. For the Conqueror rune, it's kind of tough for Riot to touch this. Champions such as Aurelia and Jax who are good but not OP really need this rune to succeed. It's already seen several nerfs and if you nerf it again, Aurelia would be tossed in the dumpster. Speaking of Aurelia, I recently just made a complete history of Irelia video. It's 30 minutes long, taking you from 2010 in her release all the way up to today. I spent weeks and months on it, so I'd really appreciate if you went and checked it out. The reception's been great so far, so thank you for all of you who have seen it. While it's true that Riven does have many high elo and challenger one tricks that make her look even stronger than she is, I think that it's very clear she has too many strengths and not enough weaknesses. She doesn't have any truly bad matchups at the moment besides Urgot, who did receive nerfs, and Kennen, who is getting nerfs, and this really only applies to high elo anyway. No one is afraid of platinum Kennens. To summarize, I think that if Riven is to receive direct nerfs, it has to be with a bit of the AD scaling on her shield because there are a lot of things that give attack damage right now to help out your shield strength or they could look to revert a buff that she was given a long time ago. This change really helped her out in her bad matchups such as Jace or Quinn and helps her get through the laning phase. The one big thing that counters Riven is sustain, because her natural sustain in early laning phase should be really bad. An issue that I see with Riven right now is that I used to be forced to take the resolve tree and take second wind or bone plating plus a Doran shield to even survive a ranged matchup, otherwise I'd go down 100 CS. As of right now, Riven can go Inspiration or Sorcery Secondary with no issues, and can even start Longsword and 3 Potions and still survive the Jace lane. Another thing to consider is just how good Enchanters are at the moment in the support role. Right now, it's basically Enchanter only bot lane meta, and they are by far and large the best types of supports. And they buff up carries. Any type of carry will do. It doesn't matter if it's ranged, melee, AD, or AP. Having a Lulu, or a Sona, or a Soraka, or a Nami, or a Janna comboed with Riven will always be a good combination. One thing that is also quite different right now than any other time in Riven's history is that there have been plenty of times Riven has been very very good in solo queue, but would never get any competitive play. Which is not the case this time, Riven has seen some pretty good competitive pick rates and has been played several times in the top lane over the last couple of months. Spider lane. And 2v2. Oh, just do it, Khan. It's pretty reliable. This would be with an uncertain matchup, but probably an Urgot. Oh, and we oh, see it. Oh, let's go. Khan's bringing back the Riven. He's feeling the 9.4. And is it today versus he yesterday? Theoretically, still have the jungle Riven here. We have to wait until the clock ticks down. Griffin on gaming. They have access to. First oh, what the hell? Okay. Riven insta locked by Dom1 Gaming. In some ways, it's fair to say that nerfing Riven is definitely mostly a solo queue nerf, but it's also not the worst thing in the world for competitive play as well, simply because it's true that Riven has been picked in spots here and there in pro play. If Riven is to receive indirect nerfs, I would look at either Legend Tenacity or the passive on Death's Dance. I feel as if Conqueror is a fair keystone because it is truly weak early game, in fact it's terrible early game, but it does allow bruisers to fulfill their carry fantasy later on into the game. However, comboing Death's Dance and Conqueror healing together makes her stupidly tanky. Whether you would call it regional bias, NA bias, Riot being crazy, or just the fact that Riven is straight up broken, clearly something should be changed in this matter. Not just because Riven players want to start playing their champion again because she's always banned, and not just because people don't like playing against a champion, but clearly this has generated some conversation, which is interesting nonetheless. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching today's discussion video. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below, and go check out that History of Aurelia video. Thanks for watching.
Uh, the thing with Riven is she's crazy fucking broken. Aatrox gets to be incredibly hard to play and doesn't get to be broken. Okay. 